back despite not winning the Peace Prize this year. It's the most non-violent protesting band in the world, the Columbia University Marching Mahatma Gandhi's. Featuring Jay Glenn Beck, winner in science, Jay Bailout, winner in economics, and Jay Columbia University Marching Band, winner in literature. As well as Butler Stacks propositions going up, tunnel propositions going down, and free condoms on campus at an all-time low, the band now presents an all-star gala halftime salute to Columbia's number one ranked activity. Columbia's own watchdog organization has begun eyeing green changes here in Columbia. We've learned one thing so far, saving the earth is super profitable. For example, Columbia started charging for the takeout boxes. We depend on to nourish ourselves and get to class on time. While across the street, Barnard has banned the sale of bottled water. Don't worry, Barnard women can still hydrate themselves if they can shell out $12 for a reusable Barnard Nalgene. Diana Goers have resorted to brewing their own bootleg water in dormitory sinks, transforming the campus into one giant speakeasy. Things have gotten pretty dangerous after hours when gang more and smuggling hits its peak. Water keg stands and other underground drinking games are so out of control that it's only a matter of time before someone gets caught for a fatal dose of H2O. Columbia's administration just doesn't seem to have a grasp on this environmentalism thing. So the band has some suggestions. First of all, we should install some wind turbines on Claremont, because let's face it, that street blows. <laughs> Secondly, all pathways to mud should be covered with solar panels, because engineers would never need to see the sun anyway. Most important, of course, is our plan for saving millions of trees. No more paper. No more flyers. No more handouts. No more readings. No more textbooks. No more little blue test booklets. And no more C-Spot. Please, please, no more C-Spot. In honor of all the ice caps melting, the band now forms the number of polar bears who haven't officially passed Columbia's swim test and plays Sweet Dreams are made of this. home wrecker Jeff Zucker. His resignation left the en entertainment industry at once relieved and terrified about what he'll do next. Just to recap, this is the man that took a network dominated with Will and Grace, Seinfeld, and Friends, and turned it into a daily Law & Order marathon topped off with Jay Leno. Rob Emanuel was next, under the guise of running for mayor of Chicago, a job that could be performed by a stuffed chip. To the band, it's obvious that Ron couldn't look at Obama the same way after losing the D.C. Little League Championships. Oh, and that whole thing about failing to fix the economy. Rick Sanchez, the final stop on a resignation tour, just couldn't hold back from running his big, fat, anti-Semitic mouth on the air. And shockingly, network executives don't take too kindly to that kind of talk. However, we in the band encourage Rick to keep hope alive. After all, Governor Elliot Spitzer just got his own CNN talk show, so there's no such thing anymore as unemployable. In honor of moving on to better things, the band now forms a resignation letter and plays Beat It. Thank you. 